hi guys. Darren, I know uh, media day is not always the most uh, fun day of bite week, but uh, I guess what is the emotion like finally, you know, being back and just a couple days away from being in the cage? It's good. I'm actually happy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, you just get asked the same questions all the time, though, don't you? It's just like, I don't know if you just have to answer the same, <laughs> the same answer all the time. Like, I don't know. It's good. You know, I'm ready to fight Saturday, so let's go, innit? You know, all this, you know, time that you've had away, I mean, was there ever any point where you, you thought, like, it's just not going to happen for me anymore. Like, I, I, why do I keep chasing this dream, you know, and it's so hard for me? Was there ever any of that creeping into your mind? No, definitely not. I'm, I'm in my 20s. I've been to the absolute peak of the sport. Uh, and, you know, get knocked down 20 times, get up. Always get up. So that's like, I feel like I've stayed, stayed true to myself. Uh, not, like, I'm not motivated by money or fame. I'm motivated by the goal I set myself. And, uh, you know... MMA is a unique sport. It's the only individual sport where the best fight the best, I believe. And MMA math makes no sense. You, you, when you're in that top 10, top 15, fighting all the elites, you lose one to him and he beats the guy who beat you and it just doesn't make any sense. So it's just like, it's a fun sport. So it is what it is. What, what do you want me to say? I've fucking trained my bollocks off. I'm ready to fight Saturday. You get matched up with Drigas. I mean, obviously, kind of newer to the organization. Were you familiar with him at all? Did you know about him as an opponent or... Yeah, I mean, like, uh, he's been beating people. He's he's on a rise. Obviously, I'm the guy to take the fight. It's not like a, like people. He's looking up. I'm lo like people say I'm looking down. I feel like I'm looking up, and he could be looking down on me because he's the one winning. So it's just going to be a good fight. Yeah, I'm not going to. I don't think there's any smack talk to be said. He's he's fucking South African. I don't think they've even used profanity. So he's a nice guy. What am I going to say? It's a good fight, isn't it? You pick up a win here. I mean, what what is it go? Do you let yourself look forward? Have you kind of stopped like making advanced plans of like what comes next or what the plan is for next year? Do you, do you still no. do that? What is it? No, I just I've just trained hard. I've just I've just trained really hard as I always do for this this fight. I've just come in prepared. I'm very very prepared for this fight. Uh, I feel like I'm in the shape of my life actually. I feel fucking really good. Like I'm wanting more even like this week when I'm training. I'm like I want more rounds. Like the the. My friend, cap, cap, Captain, last night comes uh, into my room like 11.30. He's like, brother, please don't train in the morning. I was like, no, I've got it. He's like, you need to rest. I was like, okay. So I rested today. Darren, obviously, if you look at yourself on, on your social media now, you can see what sort of shape you're in. You're in good shape. Compared to the Brunson fight, how much better are you I'm feeling? I'm right? fucking phenomenal shape. Get a load of that, fella. Come on. Get a load of that. We're ready. Usually you save that for your only fans. <laughs> uh, but how much better are you feeling for this fight than you were for the Brunson fight? Obviously you went into that fight with, with an injury. Yeah, I mean, I don't talk much about the injury. Everyone knows I was injured. Uh, I just, I couldn't really do much for the fight. I just didn't want to pull out of the fight. That was the thing it was. Uh, back then, and now I've got a little bit of Nina. People say I always pull out, but I fucking, I took that fight. I was absolutely fucked. And, and, uh, I'm not taking any from Derek, he beat me fair and square, but I was only able to prepare for that fight in one way, and that was just a little bit of boxing pads and, and, and a little bit of, like, uh, the bike. Like, you know, I've had a good camp this camp, I've trained really hard, so I've had good partners. Uh, I feel like, I mean, I think if you look at me, you're going to look at me on the scale on whenever the weight is. Like, I'm going to be looking like what I used to look like, so, you know, there's... Why, uh, why do you train in gloves that are, like, falling apart at the seams? Oscar, I just don't give a shit. I don't really give a shit. I was walking in Thailand, the gyms every day. I didn't have no shin pads, no gum shields. I remember my first day when I got there, the, the likes of like uh, Nem Coven that were on the mats, and I was like, oh, I need to get in this class now and spar. And I had to lend shin pads, groin guard, gum shield, and then that was just a running joke. Then every day with the coaches, they were like, can I tell you like a UFC super that? And I was just like, I just don't, don't really give a shit. And then Cody seen me the other day, and he was like, hook me up with some gloves. Oh, I suppose it's a good thing. It's humble, isn't it? Did you have to apologise to Vittori for calling him a big stupid orc? <laughs> I thought that was going to be some beef on site. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I was doing my rounds in the cage. Uh, me and like Arm and Suruki and all that were training together. And next minute, I seen this big dude uh, wrestling the other side. And I was like, who the fuck's that? And he turned around. I was mad. I thought, oh, no, I don't need this shit. We're going to be fighting right now. And actually, 
He's one of the most pleasant guys I've ever had the privilege of meeting. He's just a fucking pleasure to be around. Obviously, he's a hard worker. So from there, I had like three, four different gyms I was training at, and uh, I just took him with me. I was like, come on, let's get the rounds in now. You tap me, I tap you. Who gives a fuck? You fucking kick me in the face, I kick you. It's, don't care if we're going to fight one day. Like He's, he's a guy I want to train with. Uh, we actually had a good time and the, the day before I was leaving I was actually training on my own just getting like a lot of work and doing really training and he was coming into spa so I timed the sparring and stuff like that actually really nice guy very nice guy do you feel bad about the things he said now? yeah I do yeah <laughs> stop beefing with everyone innit got Darren, too much beef on the go Darren you right here um, we spoke yesterday I wanted to say congratulations on having another child yeah um, thank you what is it like when you're doing obviously previous camps are hard enough but especially when you've not only seen it once in the lead up to this how's it been yeah I think, I think I've, I think that until it's matured a little bit because I know I said a few years ago I don't care but I fucking I've really missed like my family like uh, if you've had asked me a few years ago what I want to do after this fight I'd have said I want to go and party I just want to get back to my family now and spend Christmas with my girls and yeah, my girlfriend, I'm, I'm re- I've really missed them. It's really been a little thing about like the sacrifice for this camp as well, because I haven't been home, I haven't been anywhere, I've been in a secluded little place, just proper putting real work in. And I've only seen my newborn daughter one day, when the day she was born. The next day I was on a fight, so it's been... I don't know, know her, I don't know the personality. Her. So it's been quite tough, a uh, big sacrifice. So Saturday will hopefully show her all that as well, and I'll get back to my family. I can't, I can't wait to see them. Do you have any plans as like a family to do anything around Christmas or just relax? I'm 30 in the 24th of December, so they're all trying to get me to like book a party. I, I don't want to. I just want to get home, and uh, like uh, you know, I've got a fucking house I'm proud of. There, I just want to chill in my house and just watch Christmas films with my kids and just watch them be happy. That's all I want right now. I, I just want to fight, get home for my family, and just that's what I want to live a pure life. And finally, from me, a uh, good training partner of yours. You spent a lot of time with his camp, Brendan Lochnain. Yeah. He's won a big million. I think he'll be here to watch you, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, he'll be here, mate. He'll be sharing the million. I'll, don't get it twisted. What are your uh, kind of thoughts on you know that? He's had such a long journey, and now he's a millionaire, right? Yeah, I, I mean, fucking hell, he's a, he's a millionaire. It's, it's, it, he's a millionaire. He's not in the UFC. It's like he's in another organization. It's a bit wild, but I'm so happy for him. He's a fucking genuinely nice guy. And, and at, the, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll put it out there for him. He is one of the best featherweights on this planet, trust me. I've seen him absolutely more than everyone out in Thailand and there is the highest level you will get there and he's a, uh, I don't know what's next for him, he's coming here, to, he's, he's helped me, I've helped him, if, I hope I hope he uh, makes the right decision and starts, he's fucking, he, honestly, I was so happy seeing him win that fight, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for him. Cheers Dan. Dan, the front right here. Uh, you had shared a photo that looked like an injured eye in October, like what exactly happened yeah. with that? Uh, I was wrestling on the mat and I... Uh, I shot for a takedown, I don't know why I'm doing that, but the, it's like the worst thing that ever happened to me, like, the guy's uh, middle finger, I felt it go to the back of my brain, and like, I actually tried to carry on wrestling after, and everyone was like, Anatoly who's just won in the one championship there, he was like, sit down, sit your ass down, and then it just got, it actually got worse as the days went on, and then uh, I was I was actually worried, I was like, oh, I can't pull out of another fight, i got a problem, <laughs> but then it got better, and uh, it's like it's fine now, but it was it was one of the worst eye pokes I've ever had in me. Like that, probably anyone's will have ever seen. It was really bad, like when it happened. But you know, it's a part of camp, innit? So when you shared that photo, did all the comments come in saying? Like, I actually okay. didn't share it. I don't. When I share shit, I don't think. Well, I've had to start thinking a bit more now. But I just shared me week of training. I was in like the ice bath and stuff like that, and that eye picture was on my phone because I sent it in the group. I was like, I'll post that, and then me uh, partner Christian. Was like, oh, Charles said you're gonna you're posting that to put look pull out the fight. I was like, what the fuck does that conspiracy theorist know? So like, I don't know, man. Don't know. And then uh, your opponent Drickus was in here earlier, and I know you said you, there's no like trash talk or stuff. I think he was just trying to build himself up. He said if Darren doesn't have an injury coming into this fight, he'll have one leaving this fight. Uh, do you think that's just him trying to build himself up in his mind, or do you, do you think yeah, actually means that's not trash talk? So like, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I told you, mate, these South Africans are night. They've never used profanity in their life. So it's, they can't trash talk me. What's, he's meant to say these things, you know. Like, I know he's prepared and he's a fucking, he's a solid challenger, but we'll see, innit? Um, we'll see. Darren? Hey. If he wants to get into it, though, mate, I'll ruin his life on social media. Don't get that twisted. Do, do you regret taking the uh, Derek Brunson fight? No, I don't regret a thing I've done in my life. Uh, I feel like it leads you to the path you're meant to go on. Like I feel like this year what I've been through and what I've uh, like I'm sitting here now, I just feel like I'm a very matured like Darren. 
Uh, so I feel like everything you do in your life, no matter what it is, fighting to uh, your personal, your jo- I, it's, I don't think you can have any regrets, man. So I don't regret it now. It might have been a bad decision, but I don't regret it. With that being said, um, like how, what, what's the mindset and mind frame like going into a fight, finally healthy, having a nice training camp, being secluded? Like, what's the mind frame like? I don't know. You just you sit there at night when you're done, and you just you just you, you think about things, don't you? It's it's very hard to explain. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how I can explain it in 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 the right terms. It's just. It's very hard being a fighter. You have a lot of emotions and stuff like that. You have to bottle a lot of things up. And, you know, people say to me, oh, you, you know, people will go, like, people and fighters will say, oh, well, he seems edgy, he seems this, that. It's fucking fighting when you get in there. It's totally different, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. It's a roller coaster, isn't it? I'm just happy to be on it, you know. And Driscus earlier said that um, he had to take time to become a middleweight. Uh, and he said that he he didn't want to be a welterweight fighting at, at middleweight. Do you feel finally that, that that you're a middleweight now, or do you f- still feel like you're a welterweight fighting at middleweight? I don't know. I think like I took my picture next to Marvin. I don't think those uh, he he was considerably heavier than me. I don't think there's much difference. Have tremendously big legs. Uh, maybe that was a big part of the the struggles at welter. Uh, I don't know because I think what I lack I, my. Sh- Especially now, the shape of me, my speed's phenomenal. Like I'm, 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 I'm very quick. Uh, so I don't know. Drikas is big and powerful, and I'm quick and sharp. So um, we'll see. Innit? Can't, I can't wait. To, honestly, I can't fucking wait to fight. I swear. I wish there was some beef this week because there's not. No beef. No beef. And finally, for me, uh, what's it feel like fighting or fighting on a uh, card with Patty Pimblet? It, it's gonna. I know that the fans are very happy. It feels great. It feels like. Four point two billion, and they can't even sort this shit out. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Mr>. done, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, it feels like it. Uh, it feels like with me and him are the, the the main attractions on the card. I know he's got a lot of hype now. I'm happy for him. So it feels like me and him are the. It is the scouts to, to, to take over. So yeah, we are going to take over on on, on Saturday. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait for the after party. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Hey Darren, how important is it for you to be able to compete on the London card in March after missing the last two trips to the UK this year? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to take it as an obligation. Uh, <clears throat> it would be great to uh, fight on Saturday and then be healthy enough to fight in March. I think that's a good like timeline, time frame. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, these are, I, I've only just seen they've announced it, so obviously I think Leon's going to be the main event. So we'll see. It, it, it should be a bit hard with the, the buzz in England talent we've got at the moment, you know what I mean? And even maybe maybe Brendan could get on there, so it would be good. I asked Patty, who would have the better after party, him and Molly or you and your BFF Hamza? <laughs> he said, pa- Patty and Molly, do you agree or do you disagree? Most probably, God, I've changed a little bit now. It's like maybe a few years ago, it would have been me getting locked up at once again. Everyone knows what time it is when I go mad, but I just, I don't book after parties or not. I just want to fucking, I've got a big family to fucking provide for. They have got fucking, I've got five girls running mad, you know. They're actually my life right now. Obviously, I have a little bit of fun in that, but yeah, I think they probably beat me. I know you're very motivated. You had to bring your team with you. Do you feel guilty at all that you took away your cornerman Sam Cassidy from your teammate Ty Emery, who also fights on Saturday? Uh, no, Sam, Sam's been a fucking, he's been a diamond, we've had a, I've been saying it's outside MMA, he's, uh, he's been, he's been great, he's been great, so, yeah, no, I don't feel guilty about none of that. <laughs> Thank you, best of luck. Thank you. One last one, Darren, actually, Dana White says he wants to book Hamza. Turn it in, Oscar. <laughs> Go on, what? Dana says he wants Hamza versus Colby, I'm curious. Yep what you think that fight would look like and what would the trash talk look like is Hamza the kind of guy who can hear what Colby says and not run across the stage I think stage? so uh, I think that's a very good fight I do because people don't see a lot of Colby like in, in the, the news and media but I know he's a guy who in, in, in secret trains really fucking hard and I know he's really like uh, disciplined 
I think if them two to fight, I think comes up would be the he'd overpower him. I do think it's I believe his striking's better, and I think it, when it comes to the wrestling, I do think he'd be the powerful one. But obviously, it'd be over five rounds. He'd have to be fully prepared. Uh, so yeah, uh, the trash talk as well as English is getting phenomenally better. Obviously, me and him speak on the daily. So he's got that scouse twang, hasn't he? So, yeah, it'd be a good fight. It would be a really good fight.